Welcome to the vlog everyone. I hope that your start of your day is amazing reptile army. African mole snakes, absolutely incredible. And I have an affinity towards the things from Africa, i.e. my entire arm of tattoos that is dedicated to Africa. Of course, my left arm is dedicated to Australia. The fact is, is that my time that I've spent in Africa has been absolutely amazing. And all of their animals, from black mambas to you name it, like the mole snakes, are just so absolutely incredible. But there's one snake in particular that I've always been super fond of. It goes back to the time I was down in Durban, and I actually visited my friends over at Ultimate Reptile Supply. They actually showed me their collection and there was this one species of snake I was blown away by. I had seen pictures of it and I never was overly enamored by it until I saw it in person. And I was like, oh my gosh. Now that was years and years and years ago and ever since I've been trying to actually add them to the collection. But there's only one or two people in the entire country of America that's actually working with them and there's only a couple that are being produced each and every year so there's none available. So I was like please let me get it so my friends my same friend that got me these beautiful African mole snakes actually hooked it up and got a group of animals and believe it or not there's actually two species of animals that I was on the hunt for that he just imported and they just came into the country and he sent me them today so what do you say we go over unbox these things hopefully I won't have a heart attack as I'm so excited about it but we're about to add a couple bangers for sure so here's those iconic African snakes that I have been in love with now six Seriously, since that early trip when I went to South Africa and saw them in a handful of collections, I mean, I didn't even realize, I mean, I've heard about these snakes, but man, I tell you what, they are ridiculous. Like no other snake I've ever seen. And honestly, they're very, very difficult to get. There's only a handful of them in the entire country. And I think one or two people have bred them in the country, but they're like typically unavailable. I mean, you can never ever find them. So my buddy from South Africa that now lives in America actually did me a favor and hunted these down for me. He said it was not not easy to talk the South Africans out of them because the biggest thing is is that they sell so well over there. I mean literally they're one of the most popular snakes when you have to produce them. So basically what happens is that they don't want to ship them over. They're like why would we sell them to you and have to export when we could just sell them here. It's much easier. Kind of like how I do with my snakes, right? But the fact is is that I cannot wait to show you what these things look like. They are ridiculous. And here is one of them right here. Oh my gosh. They are so bizarre. So weird so unusual these are what they call cape file snakes yep that's right cape file snakes and they are like no other snake I've ever seen the heavily skilled scales I mean like when you feel them it feels like you're like feeling sandpaper or something like that again like no other snake I've ever felt in my entire life there's actually something that's called a dragon snake and that's what they kind of remind me of is the South African version of a dragon snake they're not like a constrictor so they kind of just eat their prey live in the wild to be totally honest, they eat snakes as one of their primary diets. They will eat some small invertebrates like mice and so on like that. In captivity, they switch over to pinkies and ultimately mice, super easy. They typically have anywhere from six to 10 eggs. They can double clutch, so they're a colubrid snake, and they are just so unusual. I wish you guys could feel, I wish we had feel vision because they feel so absolutely bizarre, and they look just like this as adults. I mean, they're almost like a cow king. If you looked at them from a distance, it would look like a striped cow king, but the fact they have like a triangular Mount. It's just really bizarre. And like I said, these really weird keel scales. Unbelievable. The first time I saw them, again, I was blown away. I was like, what in the world? These things are so incredible. And I always knew I wanted to get them. But like I said, there's only a couple people working with them in the entire country. So they're very hard to get. And let's see, this is a little female here. And we ended up getting three males and two females. So here's another little male right here. Unbelievable. And again, they almost look like they're always in shed a little bit because they're a little bit like cloudy looking. They're interesting. Just a weird, weird animal. These guys, again, are kind of native to South Africa, but they'll go up into like Namibia, Nam Mozambique, you know, those type of areas too. But it's all that kind of southeastern part of the continent of Africa unbelievably cool. I am over the moon. I'm telling you what, those years ago when I saw them, I never thought I would end up working with them. I actually was begging my friends, like, could you send me some? I was like, there's just never any available. So the fact that we were able to get these file snakes are absolutely ridiculous. I am over the moon happy about them. So weird. I can't wait till they get big enough to breed. And again, hopefully we'll have some success. So it's cool. I mean, I know they're weird. They are bizarre. But these things are absolutely one of the coolest snakes that I work with to this point. 
point. But guess what, guys? That's not all that came in the shipment. And then the next ones, and these guys are big. I thought they were babies, to be honest with you. But these actually have some size. Now, I love house snakes. You guys know that I think house snakes are some of the most underappreciated snakes in the pet trade, to be totally honest with you. But these ones are incredible. These are what they call Aurora house snakes. And again, these are endemic to South Africa. Found a lot of places in South Africa, not so much on the Cape, but pretty much a lot of the other areas. And they've got this greenish look to them. They've got the orange stripe down them. They got the weird eyes kind of towards the top of their head. Just a very interesting house snake. Now, house snakes are extremely polymorphic depending on the locality. There's a bunch of different subspecies. There's a bunch of color morphs of the normal brown house snakes, which are really, really cool. Of course, there's the black house snakes. I mean, it goes on and on. But my favorites have always been the Aurora house snakes. But again, not too many people. People work with the Auroras in the country. A lot of other house snakes are being worked with, but not the Auroras. So we ended up getting three pair of these guys too, and I am over the moon happy about that as well. I mean, I got the file snakes, now I got the Aurora house snakes. I mean, look at how cool that snake is. I mean, I'm, you know, Lori wasn't as happy as I am. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I am super happy about this. And again, they're way bigger than I expected them to be. Most snakes are born really, really small. So these are definitely yearlings. And here's another one just like it. And they're all pretty similar. I mean, there's a little bit of polymorphism with them, with the greens being a little brighter, a little bit darker, stuff like that. But the fact is they all look pretty similar. And I cannot wait to eventually produce these guys too. Again, the file snakes and the house snakes, probably still a year and a half away from it. I could potentially breed them. But we just added a couple bangers to the colony. I am excited. And some of these definitely will be on display at the Reptarium in the future too because it's just so cool. I mean, I think people will love the Aurora house snakes here at the Reptarium. And then the file snakes, like I said, when you feel them, texturally, they are like no other snakes. So they're definitely gonna be really good animal ambassadors as well. Uh, I don't know guys, I'm jacked about this one. Whew. Again, there's something so interesting about African snakes. This is another really weird one here. This is the African egg-eating snake, Daisy Peltus scabra. And look at this cheeky little monkey. Strike it, strike it, strike it. It's okay, little monkey. And look at how they'll move like this. They'll actually go like that. And it's almost like a saw scale viper. Very interesting animals. And again, the same friend of mine got me these ones, which were kind of a dream animal. Now these are much more common. They come into the country, but captive born ones don't come in as often because they're born super small and are a little hard to keep alive. These are actually captive ones. So they're kind of on the rare side, but this little monkey is so funny. It's absolutely incredible. There's just something magical about African snakes. And there's something magical about the continent of Africa. There's a saying that says, once, look at this, look at this. Unbelievable. There's a saying that says, once your boot has touched the ground in the continent of Africa, you can never get the dust off. And I'm here to attest to that. There's something special about it. Once you've gone, you just want to keep going back because it's so amazing. I can't wait till I can finally travel over there again, but look at the movement in that snake. Absolutely wonderful. Reptile Army, guys, until Christmas, I've been mentioning, if you go to reptilearmy.com, you buy any merch, you're gonna get a personal video thank you from me until Christmas. So anything you buy at reptilearmy.com, a uh, personal video. Video shout out for me to you. I appreciate you guys so much. Join the army, got some really good Christmas stuff. We'll have some new drops coming here in the next month. Guess what? I got some presents. Did you see these? I did look at the box. Yes, you I looked did. at the box? Well, take yeah, they one were out. set right there. Well, take one out. Take that out. That's the file snake. Why? They're so Do cool. Do they bite? No, they don't bite at all, but they just feel weird. They're like real bumpy and they're just cool. They're like no other snake we've ever worked with before. They are very weird. Isn't it bizarre? Yeah, it's almost like an emery board. Like. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, they're cool. They look Why like do those... they call it a file snake? I don't, I guess maybe because if you, you, you could use it? it as a file, you could file things down. It almost looks like those dragon snakes, right? So are these the actual color or are these aneuthristic? No, these are the actual color okay. that they come from. Yeah, just like that. So. Because at first, honestly, I thought these were the same and this was just like no those are the roars those are the roar house snakes those are cool too right i know you're weird on the house snakes thing but those are cool aren't they they don't look like a house snake right that's why i think so they're cool are they technically really a no house they're snake? a house snake yeah same thing why do they look so different i don't know because they're just a locality i guess but they're cool huh you like them what kind of family are these in they're clubber they're like, like in their own thing like okay, they're not related not to anything else okay. no but yeah it's interesting cool well she doesn't seem to hate them so that's a good sign I think they were wearing them. So, okay, so, so. It's not a good sign. <laughs> good. So, anyways, uh, do me a favor, get those set up for me, all right? Yeah, whatever. 
<laughs> Just a little reminder if you're traveling during the holiday season, you want something to do, maybe you're up in the Michigan area, you want to come to the Michigan area. In between Christmas and New Year, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to be open because obviously we're going to be closed on Christmas and New Year's on the weekend. So we're going to actually be open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the week between Christmas and New Year. So I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to repharium.com and you can book your tickets if you want to join us here in this kind of uh, special event during the week. So our first basic week of breeding is done with the ball python. So today I actually have to remove all the males to get some feeding in, right? So obviously you gotta get the males back in their cage, give them a couple days off, give them some food, give them some time to rest and breed again. Went really well. I would say about 50% of the males locked up with at least one female this week. Some locked up with a couple females. So for the first week, I'd say it's pretty successful. Again, it's a long process. So we're talking about months and months and months going on. Probably ultrasound here in another three weeks or something on that lines. But for now, I have to literally take out all of these males. And you gotta remember that every time a male copulates, that's kind of really encouraging females to produce follicle growth. So it's kind of a dual-edged thing, right? Males copulate, females grow follicles, causing males to want to copulate more and so like that. So, you know, basically this first breeding is really more about just getting the females going, to be honest with you. It's not really as much about the actual production side. So i uh, got to get all these males pulled out. We'll feed these girls here, give them a couple days off, and then start the process all over again. And again, it's all about that organization. I mean, the fact that we organized properly made it really easy. Only took me about 20 minutes to get males back in. Whereas if I didn't have it reorganized, it might've taken me two hours. So uh, first week down, uh, many more weeks to go until we get eggs. 24 hours since I did the cement and Brillo's cage, I just kind of came back. It actually turned out really well. It's really, as they would say, hard as a rock over here. And that's where he was really digging, basically all around. What I'm gonna do is basically come back just with a little cement and do a little bit of a touch up. You know, it turns out to look okay. When there's bedding in here, it's gonna look pretty decent, I think. It's kind of blended relatively well. I don't think that anyone's gonna look at it and go, oh, that looks like crap. But uh, So I was really nervous about it, but it ended up turning out pretty good. So we're just gonna do a little bit of touch up here, uh, just for whatever, let that dry for another 24 hours and then Brillo can go back as an enclosure uh, so that so we have him not burrowing out. I tell you what, what you know it's all a learning experience right every time we get a new animal like we got Drogo now we've got Brillo it's a, it's a learning experience we have to learn what to do and trust me we learned the hard way when he tore this enclosure apart so uh, I think everything turned out better than expected I was a little down on myself so uh, definitely worked out well so I'm going to do just a little touch up here and he's going to be ready to go back in his enclosure tomorrow. Cape file snakes, Aurora house snakes. I mean, I tell you what, that is a good day. I hope that you enjoyed it, because I certainly did. If you did enjoy unboxing, for instance, there's an entire playlist of unboxing we're doing. I seem to unbox a lot lately, there's no doubt about that. Could you do me one favor? Can you hit that subscription button, turn your post notification on? I guess that's two favors. Regardless, have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.